Trippers and asters surround me, the people I meet, the effect of my early life. It's all in the book. It's autobiographical. You remember the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, child that went forth every day, and the first object he looked upon, that object he became. The early lilacs became a part of his child. And the uh, song of the Phoebe bird, and the three-month lambs, and the noisy brood of the barnyard all became a part of this child. That's because my early life, my infancy, <clears throat> childhood, early manhood were all spent in the country. Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn had such a rural character, it was one big farm and garden in comparison with his present appearance. Fertile, plenty of timber, me pleased, raming the lanes and country fields where beehives range on a gray bench in a garden half hid by the high weeds, where band neck partridges roost in a ring on the ground with their heads out where burial coaches enter, the arched gates of a cemetery, where winter wolves bark amid wastes of snow and icicle trees. His own parents, he that fathered him, and she that conceived him in her womb and birthed him, they afterwards gave him every day. They became part of him, affection that will not be gainsaid the sense of what is real, the thought of what, after all, it should become unreal, the, the, the thoughts of the daytime and the doubts of the nighttime, the mysterious whether and how, and whether that which appears so is so, or is it all just flashes and specks? Mother, is God inside us and out there watching, or? Are we the only watchers in the universe? Mother, a Quaker woman, quietly setting dishes on the supper table, soft her word and manner, a wholesome odor falling off her clothes and person as she walked by. She said, God is made of light and love. And so are we. Oh, mother. <laughs> I owe her so much. Leaves of Grass is a, a testament of her temperament alive in me. My dear daddy, the quick, sharp word, the crafty lure, he became a part of this child. <clears throat> My father was not a Quaker, properly speaking, but he was a great disciple of Elias Hicks. Elias Hicks was a Quaker and a mystic and a radical. My father and I always favored the radicals. Be radical, be radical, but not too damn radical. <laughs> mother, Elias preaches tonight. And the mother would put the two little ones to bed. And because I've been behaving well that day as a special reward, I get to go also. I can remember sitting in that meeting hall, still as a grave, and after a pause and a stillness becoming painful, Elias Hicks rises and stands. Doesn't say a word for a moment. Now he was at this time between 80 and 81, tall, straight, Long, middling hair, looking around that meeting hall with those piercing eyes. What is the chief end of man, if not to seek God and enjoy him forever? Hmm? And that which may be known of God is manifest in us. And that not by our intellect, but by the light within. Now Jesus, in his last charge to his disciples, certified them that this light 
within, dwelt in them and should be in them, and thus it is for every man. Every individual rallying to the standard shines the light within. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. Elias Hicks became a part of this child. <laughs>